Hey gang, we're back and we are going to mess around and play around with some color wheels tonight. Here's a pre-purchased color wheel that we are going to kind of duplicate, not exactly like. This one has a few portions on it that help us find other things about colors that we need to know, such as um, blending in blacks and white, I mean white and black to get different hues and tints. So this one has a rotating wheel on it, which is kind of cool to have. These cost maybe about 7 or $8 at the, the art store. But today we're going to build our own color wheel just because we want to get the experience with mixing colors as well. So let's put this to the side and let's get started with building our own color wheel so that we can learn to mix colors as we create our own thing. Okay, so I'm going to use this 9 inch plate. You need a paper plate. You need maybe a roll of tape. You need a ruler, a pencil, a few tubes of paint, and a few tubes of, I mean, a few paint brushes. Okay, you also want to get a business card or something that has a really strong right angle. This is going to help us create some lines that we need to create. All right, so I did some calculations with this nine and a half inch or nine inch plate. And once I draw this plate, I'm going to discuss with you guys what increments around here we're not going to match these or measure these because this is larger than the paper plate we just need these increments right here so since this plate is 28 inches in circumference i have calculated that maybe two and a half inches is required to make each of those faces for the color so let's go ahead and draw the circle all the way around okay draw the circle all the way around and we know that if it's nine inches four and a half inches sorry about that guys I had a momentary lapse with my video so we know that if this thing is nine inches four and a half inches to the center would be our our center point okay so what you can do is you can put your ruler on here and go to your nine inches visualize your nine inches where your plate is or if you have an eight inch plate half of eight is four so half of nine is four and a half so i'm just going to put a dot at the four and a half mark then i'm going to go across this way and check it out as well make sure my dot matches my four and a half okay so the next thing that we're going to do is go ahead and take this roll of tape and center it. Make sure you center it. You can eyeball it. These rim around here needs to be equal all the way around. So you want to do an inside line and an outside line. Now that we have that, we're good to go. Next thing is take your ruler and just draw a straight line at any point through your entire three rims straight line once you have that straight line we need a right angle line we need a line that goes the, uh, at an orthogonal to it so we put the ruler on the dot take your card and put it there to make sure and just double check that your ruler isn't turned because it needs to be perfectly at a right angle to this ruler and that line everything has to match see See how it works? So then you're going to take a, rule, a pencil mark and you're going to go straight through there. All right. So now that we've gotten these steps done, the next thing is to do these divisions in each one of these quadrants. Two and a half inches. Three of them should fit here. Three should fit here. Three should fit here. And three should fit there. So two and a half inches through... And I know it's tough trying to measure out uh, a curve with a straight tool, but it's pretty rough. It's pretty um, rough. So do the best that you can to make sure that you get three even spots in each one of those quadrants. Two and a half, two and a quarter would be good. Two and a half. And so I have two and a half here. Oops, right there. And then two and a half right here. Okay, once you have all those spaces, you should have 12 even spaces. You take your ruler and you match it to the dot in the middle. 
Okay, touch the dot in the middle, and you should be touching another mark on the other side. Let's go this way, over here first. Uh, you wanna make sure you're in the middle. If it's off, you have to move your ruler because these dot, these lines have to go to the dot in the middle. So sometimes when you're not able to measure your circumference correctly because you have a straight tool and not a curved tool, um, it's going to be a little off. So if you have to move your ruler, that's fine. Just, just know that you have to put a line that is going to a line that is going to go through your dot in the middle. Okay. So now we have 12 spaces. Get through these steps. We'll come back and then we'll start mixing colors so that we can start with creating our color wheel with hues, tints, and shades. Okay, I'll see you back in just a few minutes. So now we're gonna go ahead, well, we're gonna go ahead and start inserting where our primary colors are gonna go, right? So the three primary colors are red, blue, and yellow. With these three colors, you can make all the colors in the color wheel. So let's start off by identifying one space with red, and then you're gonna skip three spaces and go with the next color. So we're gonna to go to the right and create a, put a yellow in. So skip three spaces, and here's another primary yellow. Okay, skip three spaces, and here's another primary blue. So we're gonna start off with painting those three colors first. Get a styrofoam plate. Okay, and you want to put your colors on your plate. Put them right at the top. And you can start off with yellow in the middle, since eventually those yellows and, and the red that's going to be on the left will start to blend. So put a yellow in the middle and put a red on the left side. This is really nice red. And then you want to put a blue on the right side. So set up your plate to look like this. It could be a round plate. You can do the same thing on the round plate, but you want to set them up in order, okay? So we have the red here, the yellow here, and the blue here. We're going to start with the red and hydrate a small brush, a small flat brush like this one, just to get started with. Hydrate it in water, not too drippy. You just want to make sure your bristles are a little moist, not too drippy. And then you want to go ahead and get a little bit of your red and you want to put it in this spot right here you can use a flat you can use a round I just think that the flat works better because it fits into the lines a lot nicer So again, we are creating this color wheel and the color wheel are the color wheel is going to have all your primary colors, all your secondary colors, and then all your tertiary colors. And then and that'll all be on the first ring, the outer ring. The second ring will have your tints. I mean your your uh, yes, your tints. Lighter colors of these hues that are going to be out here and then right inside of here will be your shades so you fill that in completely nice and smooth and then when you're done with that you can clean off your brush clean off your brush and then move over to your yellow you don't want to mix these yet make sure you have a nice clean brush before you move to the next color really really simple and kind of fun we're learning something new as we are practicing this activity learning something new probably never created a color wheel before so there's my yellow clean off your brush dry it a little bit go in there and get your blue and put your blue in i can't wait till we get to the prime the secondary colors these are primaries. Remember, primary colors make up all the rest of the colors on the color wheel. 
all of the colors in the rainbow come from three simple primary colors red blue and yellow red blue and yellow and this is a really nice little cool flat brush not too chunky it's a nice thin one too so you have more control uh, while you're putting your colors in your spaces so a lot of times people create these color wheels with watercolor and that's okay you just got to remember to let the adjacent colors dry before you put one next to it because they will want to merge the wet on wet thing will happen where the colors will kind of bleed into the next area so now let's clean off the blue brush clean off the blue okay so now we're going to go in the middle of each of the primaries with the next the secondary colors so the the two the the um red and the yellow will make what orange and then the yellow and the blue will make green and then the blue and the red will make purple so now when you do these words around the edges you want that to be really neat i'm just scribbling it in with a pencil just so that we can um, get acclimated with this video on this video so make sure you make everything neat this is a very graphical piece we want to be neat and clean so now let's go ahead and do the orange which is yellow and red so maybe 50 50 to get started with just to see if you're getting that orange that you need out of there a little bit more red is a pretty potent strong hue so sometimes you want to use less red than the yellow just depends on the pigment just depending on the quality of the pigment that you buy um, basics is pretty good quality and so therefore I'm going to use less red and more yellow to get that orange but you keep looking at it you want it to be different you want those two colors to be different because they need to look like the blend of the two so that'll be orange go with an orange paint your orange in there because here's the thing when you get into this space right here that'll have to be what's called red orange which means you don't want this orange to be so close you want you want a gap you want a space you want to see a transition from one to the other all right so that is one secondary color. Orange is secondary to red and yellow. Clean off your brush and let's go ahead and build out our green. Secondary color green, yellow, and blue. So you want to take, again, very strong hues right here. Very strong pigment, just like the red is. The yellow is not as strong as those two. So you want to take a little bit of blue and maybe twice as much yellow. To make your green and we're just going with pure pigment sometimes when you add white to these it may boost it a little bit but it'll turn it into a tint so right now we're just doing pure secondary primary secondary and tertiary colors without mixing anything else with it no white and no black so we have our nice green going in here it's kind of like a hooker green really grassy and organic looking really grassy and organic want to stay inside of the lines keep that nice and neat those points are going to count toward your all these efforts are going to count towards your final grade on this, so it needs to be neat. Very, very neat. Almost like you had it printed at a print shop. Okay, so now that is my green. Clean off your brush. And then guess what? The next primary, secondary color is going to be blue and red together. 
So it takes some blue, and because blue and red are pretty strong in its chroma value, its color value, you can probably just go 50-50 with those. And you're gonna get a really nice purple out of that. Mix it up good. And then go ahead and place your purple in. Now we're working on a mixed media paper. You don't wanna do this on copy paper. You don't wanna do this on just regular any old paper. It has to be a pretty substantial weight to it. And this one is a 98 pound. 98 pounds in the paper means that the paper's pretty thick. The larger the number, the thicker and more, more heavy the paper's gonna be. The smaller the number, um, the thinner and lightweight and fragile the paper is going to be so you want to get a nice pad and you guys should be working on a mixed media canton mixed media pad like i'm working on your pages are a little bit larger and you're going to see in your instructions that you're going to do um maybe two assignments on one sheet at some point but this is one of the assignments and this whole assignment can go on one sheet a nine inch a nine inch in your larger pad a little bit larger than mine but just put the the uh, color wheel on that one sheet so now we have the secondary colors are in orange green purple now we need to combine these two to get a blue green we're going to combine these two to get a green yellow so it's going to get a little bit trickier right now let's go with making ourselves another batch of green okay and then and then uh, uh, take some yellow i mean some blue over to that green because we're just darkening the green just a little bit with some blue and we're going to put that right there so they need to look different definitely make sure that they are looking different this is your tertiary color tertiary color Okay, and that is your green, blue-green color. Clean off your brush, and then we're gonna do a green-yellow color. So I need to make myself a little bit more green over here. So green is uh, yellow and blue, and then I'm just gonna add more blue to my green, I mean more yellow to my green to make it a kind of a greeny, a yellowish green or a greenish yellow, something like that. Either way you want to go with it. it. means the same thing. That sounds... That styrofoam is really getting to my teeth. So I'm going to put that down so it doesn't squeak so much. Okay, so now... Uh, see, it's almost a little bit too close. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe it's not. I think it looks good. So put a thin coat of yellow-green in this space for tertiary in between a primary and in between a secondary color. The tertiaries go in between a primary and a secondary. Okay. And we look like we're looking pretty good here. All right, clean off your brush. And now we need the orange and the red, um, the orange and the yellow. So I already have some orange on the plate. I'm just gonna push a little bit more yellow in a certain spot just to brighten it up with yellow <clears throat> and put it in that spot right there so right in here is a yellow orange i think you guys have the drift of it right so i'm gonna speed it up a little bit well i'm gonna finish this up off camera finish this rim up off camera and then we're gonna come back and do tints and shades okay class now we're back we have all of the primaries all of the sec secondaries and all of the tertiary colors in there and we do want to label each one of them appropriately as i have done and you want to print them really nice and neat 
Okay, make sure you're right at the spot for each one of them. So we have primary, primary, primary. It makes a triangle, kind of like that. Okay, and then we have secondary, secondary, secondary. You always have three of those. Okay, and then for tertiary, you're going to have a few more than three. You're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six of those. So you have three of the primary, three of the secondary, and six of the tertiaries because you're splitting the, the primary, the secondaries into another whole nother color for each set of them. So this is a really good example to follow. Hopefully you guys are doing well with this. Um, when you start working on it, I'm going to be looking forward to seeing the pristine work that you guys are going to be doing with this color wheel. Okay, so now the next thing is the tint. We have tint here on this row. And the tint is simply adding white to each of your hues. So you may have to mix them all over again on a different plate. Not sure how you're going to handle that. But you want to add a little tiny bit of white to each one of your, your hues that you put. So we have 12 of them. I'm going to just put a little bit of white right here. And I'm just going to be mixing as we go along. But keep in line with what you're doing. So now I have two plates going. <clears throat> so here's my red. I'm going to add some white to my red so that I can have that tint. And a tint is a lighter shade of the pure hue. So I'm going to grab some of this white and put it over here with some of this red. I always usually put it right next to and gradually drag in my chroma or my hue to mix. I don't normally put the paint right on top of the paint because I just want to, I want to take my time to mix it and I want to see it grow into the color that I need or want. So I want a shade, I mean a tint, a very light tint of my red my red um, primary color and usually a tint of red when you add white to red sometimes you get pink and that's okay because that is the tint of the red that is the tint of the red so each one of your colors, even the ones you've mixed, you're going to have to mix a little bit more in order to get the correct tint for each one of your, your hues up here. So now let's go with, I'm just going to go with my primaries first. I'm going to start with the primaries. Keep it simple. So I'm going to get some white to go with some of this yellow over here. Create a tint of the yellow. It almost looks like a canary yellow now. Really, really bright. And when you, the reason that we do this, the reason that we want to understand how to do this is because when you're painting, you, you're going to need darker areas of a hue, maybe lighter areas of a hue. And when you understand, not only are you going to understand blending paint to get new colors, in the rainbow but when you need brighter areas in your composition or in your painting that that reflect light you're going to add white to whatever hue when you need darker areas that create the illusion of shade or shadow then you're going to have this area here where you have the shade you're adding a little tiny bit of black to each one of your your hues around the edges so go ahead and clean off your brush and then we're going to move over to blue Grab a little bit of white, come over here to your blue, and this one is going to be a really easy baby blue. Okay, and put the blue in. You can go very light with your your shades if you want to, if you ever need to. You can, you can adjust your shades to be whatever you need it to be. If it's a really bright area in your painting, put more white really thin out that chroma in this hue really thin out that that tone of the hue by adding more white to it so now we have our shade our tint of our blue 
and now we're going to go to secondary colors and secondary color in in um, of green that would include the yellow primary the blue primary remember there's always three spots in between each primary three spots three in the center of the three is your secondary so let's mix up a little bit more of the secondary green color And again, you add and you just continue to, you go small first, you add, do a little bit, and then you see what your color's looking like. And this one looks like that now. So now I'm gonna grab some white and put it in this value of color. And now I have a shade of the green. And again, if you add more white, it gets brighter and brighter. So it just depends on what your mission is and what you require in the painting. So here is a little bit more green, which is your tint of green. Just a hint of green. You can have a dark tint or a light tint. Depends on how much white you put in there. So clean off your brush. You're cleaning off your brush in between every one of them. Now we have to do this secondary purple so I'm gonna mix a little bit of red over here and you're gonna have a couple of plates that you're moving around getting all your colors together on so here's my purple coming in and what I'm gonna do is add a little bit of white to it now and you might want a few blobs of white on here so you don't cross contaminate with other colors that your brush already touched just like tiny little blobs of white all over your plate. See, because I'm almost cross-contaminating my, my white here because I'm using the same brush to pluck white to go into my, my specific batch to make the shade happen. I'm sorry, the tint. I don't know why I keep saying shade. So here's a tint for the purple or violet, if you want to call it violet. This paint, this, this paint is so nice and buttery. I love it. Make sure you don't have too much globby on your brush too. Nice, clean spaces. All right, so now guess what? We are going to mix this color and this color to get the shade of that violet. Red, this one right here is red violet. So this, this is a violet and that's the red. I already have a red over here and then I have a violet here. If I just mix the two of my of my tints to get my shades to get I'm sorry my tints together, then I'm gonna get the correct value and the correct tint for this one right here. So I just mixed together this one and this one to get that shade. You have to be organized with what you're doing. I mean, it can be a little confusing. Have a few different paper plates if you need it to keep things separate. Or palette paper if you're using a palette. So now that one's done. That is my tertiary. Uh oh, guess what? I forgot the secondary, the secondary um, tint over here. So that will be orange, which is right about up in here. And I'm just gonna grab some white and put that in my orange, right about in there, and mix that together. And then I'll have my, my, sh my tint of my orange. Tint of my orange, here's my tint of my orange. So try to keep in line with what you're doing. I should have been looking. All of my secondaries had to be done after my primaries. And now it's done. Clean off your brush. Now you need this color and the and the, the, the tint of the orange and a tint of the red to create 
the tertiary tint of red orange. So I have <clears throat> a tint of my red right here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put it next to my tint of my orange. I hope it comes out. Pray for me. I want this to come out messy. I need a little bit more white. And a little bit more white. So this is my red orange right here in a tint form. It is a tint because I've added white to it. Keep it nice and neat. All right, so now we need tertiary color yellow orange in a tint. So I don't know if I have enough of yellow and orange. So guess what I have to do? I have to make some new paint make new paint so we need a little bit of red and i just i'm just gonna go and put some blobs on a different plate this is fun stuff you guys might not be thinking it's fun but it's fun stuff and then some yellow and then we're gonna mix um primary yellow um primary yellow and uh, secondary orange to get and then add white to get this tint of the yellow orange okay so primary yellow secondary orange gets yellow orange again stay organized yellow orange this is my yellow orange coming up, y'all. And then grab some white and add it to that area. You just need little bitty batches, not a whole lot. These are small spaces. So this is my tent. Actually, I need a little bit more white. This is my tent. Now, when you say tents and shades, think about this. When you say shade, think of dark. You're in the shade at the park underneath a, an umbrella or something. So that is how I got to keep track of the tents and the shade. Shade is under a umbrella at a park. And actually, I think that this one is, might be a little bit too light. Because it's matching my tertiary tint. Okay, there you go. Much better. All right, so now we have to get this secondary green and the primary yellow together to create a tertiary yellow green, and then we're gonna add white, okay? Primary yellow and green. So blue and yellow make green. Remember? So we're gonna add a little bit more yellow to turn that tertiary color into yellow green. Let's grab some more yellow. So again, you have to stay organized on what you're doing. Look at each of the batches or the spots on your color wheel so you could know what to you have to make a mixture for. <clears throat> and then grab some white and put it in there. So now that is our tint of yellow green tertiary yellow green yellow green a primary and a secondary are making the yellow green maybe a little bit more yellow it's kind of white you want to see a little warmness in there so let's add a little tiny bit of yellow and that makes it better all right so our warm colors are usually, think of the sun when you want to talk about warm colors versus cool colors. Think of the sun. So this half above my, on the right side of my hand, all this up here, all of that are your warm colors. They have more yellows and reds in them. Down below are your cooler colors. They have more blues and purples in them. 
Okay. So you have two hemispheres. The warm is up here. The cools are down there. All right. So now we have um, a tint to create for primary blue and secondary green to get tertiary color blue green. Blue green. So blue, there's a lot more blue in your green batch. And then you add white to it. Grab some white and put it in there. Might have been a little bit too much white, but like I say, your your shit your tints can be whatever whatever you need them to be. They can be darker, they can be lighter. And let's go with a little bit more yellow. There we go. And this is a tertiary color for blue-green. So this color has a little bit more green in there. And a little bit more blue in there than this one next to it. This one has more green in it. That shade does. This shade, oh, I'm sorry, tint. I don't know why I keep... Okay, this tint has more blue in it than this tint. And then we have a final one, a tertiary color blue-violet, blue with the violet. So let's go ahead and find, make us some more purple first. Make purple, All right? Make purple. And then with the violet, you have more blue. The blue-violet, you're gonna have more blue in it. So once you get the purple, just add more blue to it to make it a little bit darker. And then you find some white, put it in there. That's a really nice color. And then that is your, your tint for tertiary color blue-violet. So now for your shades, what you're doing is you're not using the white. You're not going to use the one that you created for tint to add black to. You're not going to do that. You have to use the pure colors. You have to use the pure hues and add a little bit of black to them. And I may need another plate, so let's grab another plate. I got a round one this time. So now what we're going to do is add a few colors. I'm just going to go ahead and kind of do it like the color wheel thingy thing. Yellow. And blue. Okay. So if you have a round plate, it might make more sense to you when you're doing your blends. See, we have our red here, yellow here, and blue down there. So now what I have to do is a firstly, the first thing that I want to do is my primaries with a tint. Remember, I'm sorry, with a shade. My primaries with a shade. So let's go ahead and put some black there in the middle. All right, so now here, it, black is extremely strong. It is probably one of the strongest of all of the darker hues. So be careful when you're working with black. I'm just gonna grab a little bit of my yellow and move it closer to my black and then put a little tiny bit of black in there. Too much black will not be good. The tiniest amount of black and you grow your shade to what you want it to be. Just keep adding until you get it to where you want it. So where's my red? Here's my red. And then here's my shade of red. This is my shade of red. If you need to start using a different brush with a point, go ahead and get one. Or just turn your brush on its side so you can get in the tight spots. And then you can still have the use of the flat area too. So that is my shade of red. Pretty cool. And then we're gonna go to the blue. So I'm going to grab some of my blue, grab some of my blue, and move it closer to my black, 
and just the tiniest bit of black on my brush to go into that blue to shade it. Okay, you don't even need a lot with this one. These are really tiny little spots right here. So now I have a shade of blue. How cool is that? Clean off your brush. Now the next one is yellow. Yellow and black is kind of funny. It's not really a cute thing, but it is still a shade. So you want to take the tiniest amount of black, not a lot, and you want to start off slow to shade your yellow. Shade that yellow, y'all. Shade it. And then you put that in there. You want to see a difference. You want all three of these to look different in the yellow lineup. So this is a shade of yellow. Okay, clean off your brush. And so at this point, you know what you need to do. You have to do your secondaries next, then your tertiaries finally. So I'm going to come back and show you my finished results. Just want to say one more thing if you feel like you want to do some um outlines on each of your your segments with a black marker that's totally fine for me um i'm trying to find one but you you need to use your ruler to do so okay you'll need to use your ruler so if you want to put a line across any of your segments just to clean it up some more you can definitely do that just be careful Okay, and it looks really neat when you do that. So if you want to put a line in there just to clean it up and identify your, your wedges a little bit more, I'm okay with you guys doing that. But you'll need to use your circle templates, the plate for the outside, and the same um, tape that you use for the inside. So I'll take final pictures of everything and show you the entire assignment after I've done all of the demonstrations, but this is just another idea where you can add the black lines if you want. Okay, finished. We have all of our hues. We have our full color hues here. We have our shades here, and then we have we have our tints here, our tints, and you can see it looks a little whitish. These are tints of your full hues. Around the outside is a full hue, and this is a tint of your full hue where you're just using some pigment and some white. And right in here are your shades of your full hues, which are on the outside. So you don't want to use these white tints to make that center. These centers have to be made up of these outer colors with additional black. I have three plates here that I went through to get this done. So you might have to have a few paper plates just so you can keep your colors separated a little bit. But this is your color wheel, and this is the first part of a series of assignments to, to help you understand more about how to color mix, what that looks like, how to create a shade, and how to create a tint, just in case you need highlights in certain places and darker tones in certain places. So hopefully this video helped. It's pretty long, almost 30 minutes, but it's worth it to watch me do the steps instead of having to read it to get it. This helps when you can actually see an instructor show you the steps. Definitely mark each one of your areas with the right color concentration that you have in there. And this is um, gonna be the first part of your activity. So I'll see you back at the second part of the activity. Okay, the black lines are in, but one FYI, wait for your paint to dry before you start drawing lines on top because this is what happens when you go in there with paint. No, you can't see it. It was a little wet, so I have paint on the tip of this um, Sharpie. So make sure you wait a little bit so that the paint settles before you put in your lines and circles. Okie dokie.